right? I want to do law signs with the tricky one, all right? And this is the bad word one. So in math, we always write this because, you know, we're PG. But in college, we could be like PG-13. So this is angle, side, and you're going to know this other side. So it's going to spell the bad word, which when you see that, you're like, ooh, we shouldn't have bad words in math, right? And so that should be an indication that something's going on here. Okay. Now, how do you know what's going on, all right? Well, one thing you could do if you want is just draw in a right angle. Because remember, law of sines and law of cosines are when you don't have a right angle. So what if you draw it in? And let's just figure out this height. All right, so this would be sine of what? Sine of 50 equals opposite over hypotenuse. So H over 5, or no, what is that? 8, sorry, my, my S. So sine of 50 H over eight. Okay, and I'm gonna, um, I usually like to cross multiply. So one times that and that. So I'm in degrees, make sure on law of sines, law and cosines, you're in degrees. So I am going to take eight times the sine of 50. And that gives me, and dividing by one doesn't do anything. So dividing by the one there. So I get about 6.1, the height is 6.1. Now that's if, you know, we had a right triangle. So that is the shortest it can possibly be. Okay. So what if it's shorter? All right. So let's say um, I draw this in and say I just sketch it, you know, because usually when you do these, you don't draw, you know, you don't draw a really pretty one. You just kind of sketch it. So say that side A, so say I'm given angle A is 50 degrees. Here, let me write this over here. Say I'm given angle A is 50 degrees, and I'm giving, um, let's see, the side that goes with it, say, is, you know, 5.8 centimeters. So I'm just going to, you know, kind of sketch that in there, 5.8 centimeters. And then this is side C and angle C. Angle C and side C, we don't know. And say B, angle B, we don't know. So here's my B, don't know that. But I do know side B is what eight okay all right so there we go all right so say you have this now sometimes we just sketch bad drawings with these guys just to get a feel so a b c and you're like okay a is 50 the side across from it is what 5.8 uh b is here now again it still spells the bad word angle side side that should be a warning okay um i always like to draw it this way and i'll explain why in a second but let's do law of signs so i get sine of 50 with side 5.8, sine of angle B with side B, and sine C, boy, and side C. Okay, this should be a warning sign to you because, again, do you see how you have two things that can vary together? That means there could be multiple answers because, like, for example, three fours, if I leave this blank over here, X, Y, you could have six eights, you could have nine twelves, Multiply by 10, you could have, what, 30 multiplied by 10 40ths. There's infinite many answers. And so when you have two variables that can vary together, that's a problem. All right. Well, let's cross multiply. So I'm going to take 8 times sine of 50. So 8 times sine of 50 degrees equals 5.8 times sine of angle B. And that's why we always divide by that. So sometimes we um, do a shortcut and we just multiply the two numbers we know, divide by this number, because really you're solving an equation. All right, so I get sine of B equals. All right, so I'm going to take 8 times sine of 50, and then I'm going to divide by what? 5.8. So again, sometimes people just multiply the numbers they know, divide by kind of the one that they don't know. All right, I get 1.0. Five, six, six, da, da, da. Okay, now I'm solving for sine. So to undo it, I do inverse sine. That is me choosing to do that. So I'm not limited in domain, right? There's, you know, there could be more than one answer. But notice I get a domain there. And that's because, remember, a sine curve is between one and a negative one. And I am outside of that. I'm up here. So this has no solution. That should not shock us because when we came up here, and figured out a right angle and we figured out our minimum height, we got 6.1 over here as our absolute minimum. And what did I give you? 5.8. So if I draw 5.8 in to scale, 5.8 is gonna only hit about right there, 
Like it's not going to touch. Even if I draw it straight at a right angle, because remember, I need 6.1 to touch. So 5.8 is too short. So that's an example where you get no triangle. Okay. Sometimes you get one triangle. I want to pose the problem where we get two. All right. So what happens? This is 6.1. All right. So let's go just a little bit longer. Let's go seven. All right. And see what happens. Okay. So I have my picture here. Now, what can happen at seven? There's seven centimeters right there. That's seven. So I'm going to draw this in. I have seven centimeters. But notice this is your hinge. And so if it's longer than the minimum, I can go seven over right there and I could get a second triangle. And so if my hinge is there, seven centimeters goes there, there's my seven centimeter mark and I can hinge it over here, All right? And seven is shorter than the eight, so it's gonna fit in there, okay? If this was 10, well, let's just draw it. If this was 10 centimeters, that would be when you get one triangle. Because notice if I do 10 out here, I make a triangle, but see if I try to, you know, hinge it over, do you see how 10 would be outside my triangle, right? So that's, so the seven is shorter than the eight, okay? And so I can hinge it in and out. So I'm expecting two triangles. All right, so let's do the math. All right, so what do I have? I still have the same thing I had before. I still have sine of, or Julie, oh my word, I'm having a day, sorry. Thanks for putting up with me. All right. Angle A is still 50 degrees, side A is 5.8 centimeters, and side B is 8 centimeters. And again, when I draw these, I like to put the unknown here, the angle here, so that's 50. Um, the side I know is what, what did I give you? Oh, this time I gave that A was, well, sorry, we switched it to 7. So A is 7 over here. And then this guy is B. So you want to spell the bad word, A, S, S, and you want the two unknowns across from each other. So the unknown angle and the unknown side, okay? And so B is over here, and we're going to call these C and little c. All right, so I'm going to do law of sines. Sine of 50, this time over 7. Um, sine of B over B sine of C over C. Again, this is a warning sign because you have two things that can vary directly. All right, I'm gonna cross multiply. Again, I like to multiply those and divide by this guy. It's just a little faster. All right, so what do I have? I've sine, make sure you're on degrees, sine of 50 end of parentheses times the eight. And for order of op, I like to hit enter before I divide by the seven just to be safe. Okay, that is my ratio. So sine of B is 0.875479. Dot, dot, dot. All right, now to undo that, I need to do the, I want the angle. So I'm going to do inverse sine to both sides. So, and that's me choosing to do that. So I'm technically not limited in my domain there from, okay, so I get angle B is what? 61.1 degrees. Okay. And then I could keep going, but I'm going to take a little break because I also know that I could bend that angle in. So when I do sine, this is one answer because my calculator thinks I'm limited in domain. But remember, we did this. I did it. I did the inverse sine. So I'm not really limited. So let's go ahead and draw our other triangle while we're at it. 50 degrees. And this time we know that seven's going to come in. And let's see, this is what my eight. So this is A, unknown with unknown. This is your hinge where it bent in. So this is C, and then my B's over here. Okay, so let's go back and look at this guy. This is at what, 61.1 degrees is up here. Remember, there's also another positive sign value that I can fold over, okay? Because remember, the calculator thinks you're on the side. And it won't give you any obtuse angles, but you could fold it over here. So let's do that. So if I fold it over, if this is 61.1, so is that. Um, 90 degrees in a right angle. So let's take 90 minus 61.1. So that leaves 28.9 for that guy, 28.9 for that guy. All right, so I want this angle. So you could take 
uh, 28.9 times two, because you have two of those, plus the 61.1. Oopsie, didn't like that. Let's get rid of that negative. Oh boy, yeah, delete that. Um, and get 118.9. The other thing is you could take 180 and go backwards 61.1 and get that. And again, I can't type in today. So how about we delete that again? All right, 118.9, okay. So this angle right here could be 118.9. All right, let's go ahead and solve. All right, I know angle B is 61.1, so I'm going to fill that in. I also know that all the angles of a triangle add up to what, 180? So I'm going to take 180, subtract the 50, subtract the 61.6, and what's left? This guy up here is 68.5. Four. And again, these are all in degrees. All right, so C is what I just say, 68.4. All right, so now I can cross multiply again. Now, I like to avoid um, rounded things as much as possible. I mean, we have to use this, but I'm going to go back to the one that wasn't rounded. So I'm going to ditch this guy and I'm going to cross multiply again. So I'm going to take sine of 68.4 times a seven, and then I'm gonna divide by the sine of 50. Okay, and that's gonna give me my C. So let's see what that is. So sine of 68.4 times seven, and divide by what, sine of 50? Okay, I got 8.5. So C is approximately 8.5. All right, so I think now, did I say I wrote eight, said 8.5, wrote the wrong thing. All right. So now you can see I have all three angles, all three sides, but I have a second triangle. So let's go down here to this guy. All right. So now I can subtract from 180 to get this one. So this is where that obtuse angle that I got from folding over. So if I take 180 in a triangle, subtract what, 50 and subtract 118.9. All right, what's left? 11.1, .1, so 11.1 .1 degrees. Okay, so now I'm just missing this side. So let's do sine of 50 over what, seven? And then I have sine of angle B, which is 118.9 over eight. And then I have sine of, boy, I'm having a hard time, 11.1 .1 over what, side C? All right, again, this is rounded. I'm going to avoid him. So I'm going to cross multiply right there. So I'm going to take that times that, divide by that. So I'm going to take sine of 11.1 .1 and parentheses times 7. So cross multiply, enter, and then divide by the sine of 50. All right, so I got 1.8 about which makes sense, it would be kind of, you know, kind of tiny, all right? So that would be when I get two triangles. And the reason, again, I get two triangles, actually, let's go back to this initial picture, is because I can hinge it here, and the seven is longer than if it would be a right angle, so it can go out, but it could also hinge in. Like, I don't know for sure it goes out, maybe it went in, okay, and I get two triangles. now. What about if this is, say, 10, okay? Well, if this is 10, I can't hinge it in, all right? And then I would for sure get one triangle, okay? So let's look at that scenario. So I still have what? I have sine of angle A is still 50, and then side A, this time we're gonna say is 10, and then side B is Eight. And I can kind of visualize this. I'm going to pause for a second here just because I'm going to run out of time just to show you this. Okay. On this one, I went ahead and solved. I know there's not going to be two triangles because it's going to hinge out. But say I didn't. Cross multiply inverse sine. If I tried to do that fold thing again, notice that this obtuse angle would be 142.2. I already have 50. That adds up to way over 180. There's no way you can get a second triangle. And it's because that 10 can't bend in, okay? So once you get this guy, you can sub it in, uh, subtract from 180 to get C. I just rewrote it. I like to cross multiply with the least amount of rounded numbers I can get. 
and I get 13, which that means this guy's 13 long right there. Okay, hope.